adventure, sports, outdoors. With host, Harry Canterbury. There I was, back in the wild again. And I fell right at home, where I belong. I had that feeling coming over me again. Just like it happened so many times before. Hi, Harry Canterbury with another edition of Adventure Sports Outdoors. Join us today as we go to the Illinois Deer and Turkey Classic in Bloomington, Illinois. A great show, a lot of nice folks, and a lot of nice things to see. We're also going to go down and see uh, Mr. Fish, Pat Sullivan himself, cooking down at Kelleher some great crappies and bluegills we caught this past summer. We're also going to uh, see some folks in Tremont who uh, had a grand opening of a new bait and tackle and sporting store. And uh, guess who was there? Elvis himself. I figured he wasn't dead. We, he was walking around anyway. And also, we're going to take a ride in a 1930 Model A uh, Ford Roadster. What a car. Uh, I wanted one all my life. I figured I better get one pretty quick before the getting's too late. So stay tuned today for a great show. Adventure Sports Outdoors, brought to you in part by Corsaw Lumber, manufacturers of quality hardwood products, buyers of standing timber in Smithfield, Central Pool Supply, everything from pools to pool tables, and much more in Peoria on West Pioneer Parkway. Michael O'Brien Commercial Real Estate and Recreational Ground, Remax Unlimited Commercial. Kelleher's Irish Pub and Eatery, located on Peoria's Riverfront, open 11 a.m. daily. Christopher Coin Gun and Pawn, LLC, 333 Derby Street in Pekin. Our thanks to all of these sponsors. Hey, we're here at the 2016 Deer and Turkey Classic in Bloomington, Illinois, and uh, it's quite an event as it always has been. And I'm here with uh, Andy Bugis. Andy is a new associate of Adventure Sports Outdoors. And uh, Andy, quite a show, huh? Yeah, it's a great show. There's a lot of booths here, a lot of things for the outdoor enthusiasts to do. So come on out and have a good time. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun here today. And uh, we're going to interview some guys uh, that are doing seminars. We're also going to talk to some of the guys that got new products. And uh, we're going to see all sorts of things. So stay tuned today for a great, interesting show at the 2016 Deer and Turkey Classic in Bloomington, Illinois. I'm here with Lynn and Charlie, and of course we've got my buddy Andy with me, and uh, we're going to be hunting up in uh, Aberdeen, uh, South Dakota here this coming fall. Tell us about your place, uh, Charlie. Well, we house uh, up to 20 people. We got about 4,000 acres. We got cornfields, sloughs, um, cattails, pretty much anything that you need. All the food, all the drinks you can have. Lynn, tell us, uh, you guys kill out pretty regular? I mean, uh, I know how it is up there. It's pretty fantastic. Uh, it's hit or miss. I'm not. We don't guarantee your birds, but we do. We do fulfill a lot of the tags, and we do do a very good hunt up there. Um, we try. We'll hunt all day long if we have to. Sometimes you can go out 15 minutes. Sometimes it'll take all day, but we'll keep going until the dogs are done or or you're, you're limited <laughs> out. One of the two. Okay. Well, we're looking forward to going up to Aberdeen. And the name of your company again? Royal Flush Hunting Lodge. Well, for a gambler, that's an easy one to remember. That's but right. this is no gamble. This is uh, <laughs> this is a pretty good deal. So uh, we'll see him up there in Aberdeen. I'm here with Bobby with Osage Trophy Blend, and uh, of course uh, we're at the Deer and Turkey Classic, and she manufactures and sells uh, these the, the, the seed products. Tell us what they are. They're wildlife food plot mixes. Um, as it's become more and more popular through the hunting shows, um, it's great for your ground, um, puts nutrition in your soil. Um, the deer, turkey, wildlife in general like it. Um, the newest blend is the sweet and sassy. It's 
got two types of turnips, radish, rapeseed, and sugar beets. So it's a late fall plant. You plant it, they'll eat all the greens while it's nice, and then in the winter they'll come back and dig up your bulbs. You have some growing right here. Yes, I planted that on Monday evening. Monday evening, and that's just a couple days days ago. Yes, sir. And yes. that's already up that high. Correct. What's the best time to plant this stuff? Um, I have a lot of TVs planting. TV shows planting now um, because it's 60 to 90 days of germination for full growth. Um, this was planted on Monday evening, but the reason it grows so well is I have 100% natural seed. I don't have fillers and inserts. I don't have grass seed in mine. It's 100% live seed. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm here with Randy and Beverly Taylor, uh, some uh, good friends of ours, and uh, uh, they have a great product. And tell us why you did this, and I know, but let everybody know. All right, well, uh, Drake Taylor, Little D of Little D Designs, is actually the creator of our line. He was an avid outdoorsman, loved to hunt and fish, and so we developed this line of pewter jewelry for the outdoorsmen, and uh, we have just been, and Drake passed away, unfortunately, in November of 2012, and so now an organization called Big Hearts Outdoors has been started in his memory, and the sales from the jewelry underwrite that charity. I know you were both uh, his buddy fishing and hunting, but Randy, that was uh, that was his guy, and spent a lot of time with that fella, didn't you? Yeah, I sure did. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I was the pack horse. I carried everything he needed, and, <laughs> and uh, he took me just about everywhere. It yeah. was a real joy. Yeah, he, he was a, a great, uh, great son, yeah. and had a lot of fun with him. And uh, this is a great. Uh, thing to do in his memory. It yeah. really is. Well, and he actually designed a lot of these pendants um, when he was an avid bow hunter, and so, you know, really we just continue on with the tradition and just enjoy his legacy. Well, good luck and it's good to see you guys again. Awesome. Good hey, to back. see you. Thank yeah. you. I'm here with Greg Teeman, and he has a thing called Ghost Blind. I hate to tell him this, but I thought about this in Arkansas at a duck club with an old guy who's about 85. He says, I got it all figured out. We go get this glass, we set it out in front of the duck line, and he says all we'll do is reflect the water and the trees and all that stuff. And here he went and did it. But you know what? The early bird gets the worm. He's done a great job. And I had a question about it, about the sun. You say the angle, the reflection does not allow the sun to give that, that glare. Is that correct? Right. It leans out at the top. So that way if the animals are coming in close to the blind, they can't see themselves till they're right on top of it. Also, any sun reflections that hit it go to the ground instead of reflecting back. I'm here with Jerry Johnson, and uh, Jerry's been a friend of mine for many years. Uh, he is one of the coordinators and uh, head honchos of uh, Quail Unlimited. And, uh, Quail and Upland Game Alliance. Some of the chapters used to be Quail Unlimited chapters, but we've added, you know, quite a few more now that we that weren't associated with them. What type of work do they do? I know you guys are involved in planting things and seed and and propagation of uh, quail, and pheasants, and things like that. In fact, I've hunted up with you in the past on some real great pheasant hunting ground. That was, yep. of course, uh, wild pheasants, and they weren't stopped. That's correct. Uh, we've been promoting a lot of prairie grass seed through the government programs. Uh, this year, we sow way in excess of 10,000 acres here in just uh, Illinois. Uh, we have chapters now in Illinois, Indiana, and Kentucky. Now, that not only helps the quail and the game birds, but also does a tremendous job for cardinals and blue jays, you name it, and rabbits and everything else because, you know, that's just the residual that you get off of doing your main job, right? That's exactly right. That's why we went to quail and upland game because we try to do habitat work for both the rabbit, the deer hunter, turkey hunter. All of them. Uh, we try to improve the habitat for any person that wants to do it for a species now you're or not, after. You're a non-profit organization. We've got your website underneath there, so right. if anybody wants any more information about uh, this. Send us something on that website, and we'll get right back with them. All right, Jerry. Good to see you again, as always. Thank you. Let's All do right. another hunt this year. I'm ready. Okay. Hey, we're here with some real nice folks right here in Normal, Illinois, uh, Central Illinois Shooting Sports. And I've got Lynn over here and Mark on my left. Uh, Lynn, uh, what do you do there? I handle member services, marketing, human resources, a lot of things. Okay, so you went to college to figure all that out, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, guys like me, we just we just jump in the pool. And Mark, you're the store manager, right? That is correct. That's right. Yes. And uh, what's your hours of shooting over there? 
Well, right now we're in our summer hours, so we are open from uh, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday, 11 to 6 on Sunday. Okay. Starting September 1st, we'll go to our normal hours, which is 9 to 9 Monday through Saturday and 11 to 6 on Sunday. And you're one of the only ones that I know of uh, available right around the Bloomington, Normal, and Peoria area. Correct. Yeah, we have a 26,000 square foot store, 16 lane indoor range, uh, state of the art, you know, range system. It's pretty awesome. Got to okay. check it out. All right. Thank you. I'm here with Mike Lamb, and this is where all the magic is done back here in the back rooms. Nobody sees these guys. So these are being professionally scored, and, and he'll have to explain to you exactly what it means. It's on how many inches of the uh, uh, antlers contain, but there's also deducts and all sorts of other things, and it's a much more complicated deal than a lot of people know. Tell us how you score a deer. You're basically breaking it down, side to side difference, making like right side match left side. Okay. That's where your deductions come in. All right. You, of course, you have your typical and your non-typical scores. Like on this antler here, this has got two abnormal points on it. Mm -hmm. so that'll be with the deduction. Now, how, do, how much do you deduct if it's abnormal? Like, you deduct an inch or do you deduct... What, whatever the length is, we, we put a baseline. And that comes cut, off? Yes, we cut, cut it away with an, a baseline, measure that, and then it goes into the... The score sheet. So is. the more perfect it is, the less deducts they have. Absolutely. Absolutely. So even if a guy's got a massive deer and it's, a, let's say, a non typical, it's a massive deer, he still gets deducted for what on a, on a non typical? Because uh, a non typical can be a, like a freak. Right. You have to have at least 15 inches of non typical for it to be considered into that category, but it still has to meet that minimum requirement score. Measurement like uh, the main beam, which this is right main beam, measure from where it starts on the outer curve all the way to the tip. Okay, and then you've got your G1s, G1, G2. G1, G2, 3, 4, and so on. And now if it's an oddity and you have to deduct, this is odd here and here. Tell me how you would measure that. Well, as you can see here, I've drawn a baseline and I've cut it away from this and the main beam. Mark the line and measure out from the line to the tip. Mike, thanks a lot. Tim. Thank you. All right, buddy, we'll see you. I'm here with a guy that everybody knows, Rich Pearson with the Illinois State Rifle Association right here in the state of Illinois. We're at the 2016 Deer and Turkey Classic in Bloomington, Illinois. Rich has uh, been working with the ISRA for a long time and has got a lot of things done that most people don't know about. But uh, what kind of shape are we now, Rich? We've got concealed carry, but what are we looking at well, down the road? Well, we need to expand concealed carry. And of course, they're trying to, uh, we just got the bobcat hunting bill passed and they're trying to uh, get that overturned. And you know, they're, they're trying to limit sportsmen's activities, hunters. And uh, of course, we have the national election coming up. This is August of uh, 2016. And so uh, depending on which way that goes, that will be a big deal. It's important that we introduce the kids and let them come and see the deer and turkey classic and that sort of thing. Get them involved. You know, there's a couple of shooting ranges outside here, and it's very important to get your children shooting in a good way and uh, and teach them the right way to do things. And so, all this is all part of it. That's right. Well, hey, thanks, Rich, and good luck. Oh, thank you, Harry. Hey, I'm here with a special guy, one of the best helpers a guy could ever get here at the Deer and Turkey Classic. I'm here with Lucas, and he's been handing out my magazines, giving them to everybody. Have you had a lot of takers? Yeah, about uh, almost everyone has, that's come by has taken one. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. About four stacks we've had to refill because so many people wanted one. I know, it's a great paper, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. See, this guy's a good worker, and he's good help. Mm -hmm. And uh, you hire yourself out for this type of work? What? <laughs> I'm just teasing you, buddy. So thanks a lot. Lucas, he's my uh, ace in the hole. And I really started heavily hunting whitetails in 1995. I was at the age of 39. And as I've said, I'm old school. Uh, I didn't have anybody teach me as far as a father, or grandfather, or something like that. I just had to go through the school of hard knocks. If I say something out of 30 things that make sense to you, jot it down. Because you know, 25 years ago, I was sitting inside the the seminar uh, like you are today, and I would sit in the front row with a notepad and take notes. And you know what? Those things that I wrote take notes about 25 years ago still are the honest to God ways to kill a whitetail. So I learned from some of those great seminar speakers of the past. 
And another thing I want you to come, come away from this seminar, I want you to respect the whitetail. Uh, too often we talk about size. I'm Dave Barth with your Sportsman's Tip of the Week. We've talked in the past about concealed carry handguns and self-defense handguns, but we have not talked about shotguns. A shotgun for home or for backpacking is hard to beat. Uh, you just can't hardly miss. If you're in bear country, a shotgun loaded with um, buckshot or slugs or something like that would be just a really good self-defense gun to have. We have a few examples of shotguns that would make a good choice for home defense. The first one here is a Mossberg. It has a collapsible stock. It's a five shot, two and three quarter or three inch. It has a shell holder on the butt stock and it's a pump shotgun. Pistol grip, pump shotgun. The next one in line is a uh, Stevens. It has ghost ring sights, pistol grip, and it's also a pump. It shoots two and three quarter or three inch. It's a five shot magazine. If you want a semi-automatic, there's many choices. This is a uh, Benelli. It's a 12 gauge, three inch with a Picatinny rail and ghost ring sights. And here at the other end, we have a pistol grip shotgun. It's a pump. It's got a false muzzle brake here. And uh, it's also a five shot, two and three quarter or three inch. The last gun in the line here is a Remington 870 Tactical. It has an eight shot magazine, a Picatinny rail so you can mount optics on it, open sights, a ghost ring sight, and any of these would be a good choice. One thing, you'd, one accessory you would really want to put on any of these would be a sling. As far as ammunition, uh, some good choices would be a buckshot, either in two and three quarter or three inch, like a double lot, number four buck, or even slugs. Uh, a barrel load uh, would be uh, like a two and three quarter or three inch slug. I'm Dave Barth with your Sportsman's Tip of the Week. The Deer and Turkey Classic in uh, Bloomington, Illinois is always a great event. And now we're going to go down and see Pat Sullivan at Kelleher's cooking those crappies and bluegills. Mm, boy, they are good. Hey, we're down here at uh, Water Street at Kelleher's uh, Irish Pub. I'm here with Mr. Fish. And uh, this, this crappie here, th this is the kind everybody likes to catch. As you notice how thick he is across the back, that's about a oh, 13, 13 and a half inch crappie. And uh, man, we have fun catching those. Pat's yeah. holding some crappie fillets. Now, we were out fishing the other day, and I told <laughs> Pat, I said, you know what? I like my panfish, bluegills and crappie, whole. Because I just think they give you a little better flavor. They're cooked with the bone in. And when you get those bluegills and crappies cooked nice and crispy, you just take that fin and you just pull that back, and that meat just slabs out on both sides. It just seems to have a, a more unique flavor. Nothing wrong with these. All the, I've been eating these for the last 40 years. <laughs> but when I was a kid, this was the way we cooked them. We, no, invis we inviscerated them here, we cut their head off, took the scales, and that's how they went home in the bag, and that's how we cooked them. But, uh, uh, now, when you clean as many fish as I do, I know, well, this will slow see, me down. Hear that, hear that he's bragging now. <laughs> how many fish? We, we <laughs> caught a few. Yeah, yeah, we caught a, it, well, it, we caught it, a few. It would have taken me... It would have hundred, me, yeah. It would taken me... If it had taken me Two days to clean them like that. It took me about 20 minutes to I clean know, them like this. I know. So, so you. Uh, but I agree with you. I think they taste good. But with the batter I use, these are also a special, right. special fish. Well, we're gonna fry these, and uh, yeah. of course, we're down here at the uh, restaurant, and we've yeah. got. Oh, you know what? There's something here that is, I think needs to be mentioned. This is pretty special. I looked at that pan that he's using. <laughs> you know, I said, you know, that's from the 1960s. <laughs> He says, real close, he said the 1970s, the early 1970s. Tell us about the pan, Pat. Uh, that was given to my wife and I in 1972 for a wedding present. <laughs> I still use it. I still love it. Still works? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still, it still works. Uh, I, I can put my grease at 375, 340, whatever I want. And, and, and guess what? It still works and it holds the temperature great. We got, we got the fish in the ice water. Uh, keeping them nice and fresh out here. Now we'll take those whole crappie and start them first because they're going to take a little longer to cook. So now my batter is a little bit different than everybody else's. I'll, I'll, I'll put it in my dry first, then my wet, stick it in the fryer. So uh, this is a special batter that we make up it, it, and um, it holds real nice and it's a nice thin batter so, so that it um, 
you get more taste of the fish and not so much batter. So we'll start right with these um, crappie. We'll get it wet. A nice thin batter. Here we go. Now I got uh, in my flour, I've already put in my uh, obey seasoning. Of course, I have it in my batter also. So we make sure it gets a nice, a nice taste of the obey. We'll, we'll only get about three of these in that pan at a time, which is all right. Three or four. Let's check this guy out. Yeah. They're getting done. I gotta let that one cook a little more. Yeah, that's looking good. And cooking them this way, it takes about four or five minutes on each side. The fillets take just a couple minutes. Now when things come out of the grease, I always hit it with just a little bit of Obey. Not much, just a little bit. I haven't eaten for a week. I'm already full. Look at those beautifully fried crappies. They don't get any better now. I mean, that's the best that ever it is, right there. That's what we all live for, guys. All you guys that fish, that's it right there. Tell your wife, that's why you go fishing. <laughs> Hey, a lot of things going on uh, this summer. Uh, a nice event in Tremont at Lewis and Clark's grand opening. And uh, Elvis Presley was there, if you can believe that or not, but uh, he did a great job. We had a lot of fun. And there was a car show. And it was the second car show that I've taken my uh, Model A to in the last uh, three weeks. So uh, let's check it out. Hey, we're here at the uh, Lewis and Clark grand opening here in Tremont on Route 9. I'm here with the owners, Dennis uh, Frisbee, and Keith uh, Mooneyham, is that yeah. how you say it, Mooneyham? That's how you say it. Okay, because yeah. there's Mooneyham and Moneyham and Mooneyham. <laughs> but anyway, what kind of activities do you have here today? Oh, we had games for the kids. We had bags and hillbilly golf. Uh, we're at the home of the Illinois Redneck Slingshot Rifle, and we had demos shooting out there with that, uh, all versions of it. Uh, we're going to have Elvis here in just a second. Kicking and Picking was here. And we had Rock, Rusty Rockers Hot Rod Club in here today. Yeah, that was fun looking at the car. And, of course, I brought my Model A 1930 that I thoroughly love, and it's here today, too. Uh, Danny, uh, you guys have uh, started this. What kind of operation you got here? It's an outpost. It's like your old-fashioned general store. We sell everything from firearms, knives, hunting art, uh, saw art, country art, and uh, duck calls. I mean, a little bit of everything. Well, you got somebody special, and who's that today? Yeah, we've got the king. Well, we're looking forward, and we're going to see. In fact, it's almost 39 years this week uh, that the king uh, left this earth. and uh, But we've got him back today just for a short while, right here in Tremont, Illinois. What time, baby? Elvis has left the building. Hey, those old cars and Elvis, what else can you ask for? Uh, Dave Herschelman and I uh, jumped in the old Model A and we took a ride down uh, the road in Tremont and man, I love that old car.
if for folks that don't know, this is a 1930 Model A Roadster. Made in 1930, of course. This is their convertible model with a rumble seat, which the videographer is sitting in. This is your Uga horn right here. This is your lights. Uh, they also has dims and brights. And this is your, you have, in order to start this, you gotta engage this lever right here for the spark, and you take it all the way forwards. This is actually like a cruise control. Your gas is underneath here. You're, you got a uh, choke over here. And if you can see the choke is right there. And this is uh, for airflow. And the only things you got, you got a gas, this is your gas, that's actual gasoline floating in there. And you can see it, and we're right around a little under half a tank. Uh, has a speedometer, and also has a, 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 registers the miles on the car, amp meter, and has a brake, a clutch. Uh, here's your throttle, it has a starting button, you can't see it's way up there in the top. So in order to start this, you turn the gas on, the key, put it neutral, uh, throw your spark up, throw this all the way forwards, and hit the little button down there and she should start right up. Your thermometer for your, your uh, temperature gauge is right out there underneath the coil. And uh, when that uh, you know, thing gets way high, you got an issue, and of course then you've got to do something about it. But it's a fun car, I love it to death, and uh, really enjoying it here on this beautiful Saturday out here in the country. So here we go, we shift her down, you got a double clutch here. Are you looking okay, Dave? You looking all right? Okay. You start her out like you would any other vehicle. All right, you, to double clutch it, you stick the all the way down the clutch, you put it neutral, let the clutch up, push it down, and go into second. And you have to do the same thing to get in third gear. It, it was never synchronized like the modern cars. Now we're going along here, I push it in, pull it to neutral, push it down, and go down to third. We're shift. That's how you have to shift it. It's no wonder ladies didn't drive a lot of these at the time. I know a lot of women never drove at all, and uh, that's just the way it was then but it sure is a lot of fun to drive. Kathy calls this our uh, motorcycle, because we're kind of done with motorcycles now, and we get the same thrill out of this with the open air, and uh, we really enjoy it. Adventure Sports Outdoors, brought to you in part by Corsaw Lumber, manufacturers of quality hardwood products, buyers of standing timber in Smithfield, Central Pool Supply, everything from pools to pool tables, and much more in Peoria on West Pioneer Parkway. Michael O'Brien Commercial Real Estate and Recreational Ground, Remax Unlimited Commercial. Kelleher's Irish Pub and Eatery, located on Peoria's Riverfront, open 11 a.m. daily. Christopher Coin Gun and Pawn, LLC, 333 Derby Street in Pekin our thanks to all of these sponsors. Thanks for watching another edition of Adventure Sports Outdoors. It uh, was really great to be at the uh, Deer and Turkey Classic in that old car. Man, do I love those old automobiles. Uh, this coming month, we're going to do a show on George McNear. We had such a great response on the Bernie Shelton show that we have to do it again. And uh, George McNear was the president of the TPNW. It's, it's an unsolved murder. Nobody knows really who uh, took his life but we're going to reenact that show and I get to have my old car in the program, which I'm really looking forward to. So we'll see you next month.